I'm going to deviate from our Lenten theme that we've used this season of dissident discipleship. It's been a very meaningful series, but I feel compelled for us to focus on breathing this evening. I don't think it's just about COVID-19. That's certainly made me think more about how essential breath is, but really it's about the conversations I've had with people over the past week and how many times we've talked about the need to take time to breathe. So that's what we're going to do tonight. Breathing is, of course, an involuntary process. Thank goodness we don't have to think about and tell our bodies to breathe every time we need to breathe. We usually breathe and and we aren't even conscious of it. But if something interferes with our ability to draw breath, we are suddenly and singularly focused on breathing. So I invite you to join me this evening in breathing and specifically spending some time in breath prayers over the next few minutes. This kind of breathing has been practiced for centuries in the church. They practiced it because it's found in scripture. It's a form of contemplative prayer, contemplating or focusing on being with God. These prayers, they begin in our heads with words, but what happens in this breathing prayer, these breath prayers, these centering prayers, changes from our heads, from words, into an experience in our hearts where we are less focused on the words and we become more aware of the presence of God with us. So here's what we're going to do this evening. Jack and Henry Lewis are going to read some scriptures for us, and and any of those that they read, and you'll see them on your screen, could be used as breath prayers. Our music will be largely Taze music, something that Chip and Charles will also provide with beautiful strings and images to help us. Most of you, most all of you, are encouraged to breathe a prayer in and breathe a prayer out, focused not on the words, but on God's presence with you. Let the words become less important. They don't have to be perfect. Your focus is on God's presence with you. There'll be others that you'll be invited to join in breath prayers. In fact, Jason and Emmett are going to share from their personal experience of using breath prayers in their own spiritual lives. Oh, my friends, what a Lenten journey this year has been. And here we stand on the threshold of Holy Week, which was a week of very unexpected things for Jesus, as it has been for us. So let us breathe deeply this next week as we begin to experience Holy Week probably uniquely for each one of us. Now more than ever, we need to breathe. We'll have two Taze songs this evening, and I encourage you to sing along as a breath prayer with each one of them. Here's the first one. O Lord, hear my prayer, and please don't forget to breathe.
is not the one I use the most today. Uh, I started with a Russian Orthodox prayer that's rooted in Scripture known as the Jesus Prayer. And for years and years, I prayed this on a daily basis. And it, it simply says, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy upon me, a sinner. And in the tradition, you, you pray that with your breath. You pray, Lord Jesus Christ, as you breathe in. Son of God as you breathe out, and so on and so forth. And this is a form of centering. And the purpose of all centering prayer, as Connie alluded to, is to move from uh, talking at God to talking to God to listening to God, and then ultimately simply to being with God. So I I use this prayer for years as a way of centering, as a way of being with God, as a way of calming in the midst of anxiety, which is certainly something that we need to be doing right now. Over the past year, I've been engaging in a different centering prayer practice in uh, long form and in more brief periods that has been quite helpful. On a daily basis, I try to have a 20-minute sit, which is an emptying prayer, And in the midst of that emptying prayer, you just pick one word, usually one or two syllables, and you breathe in with the first syllable, and you breathe out with the second. It could be any word. It could be the word holy. It could be the word peace. Uh, Lately, for me, it's been the word Jesus. And so I just pray in and out as I breathe the word Jesus over and over again. For about 20 minutes, and really in a more Eastern tradition, the goal is to move to simply focusing not on a word, but on the breath itself. And you hold it, sometimes for four or five seconds, and then you exhale. And over time, you have this sense of being with God. Now, what I do in other times in the day is I'll return to that word or I'll return to that breathing, uh, either as I'm walking, or just for a few minutes, or even just for a few seconds. Breathing in the first syllable, and out the second syllable, as a way of centering, calming, and being with God. Now this is another form of breath prayer that that I use that has been quite helpful and has been helpful especially during this time. Now there are different forms of breath prayers and you'll hear Emmett talk about another form that he's used uh, later, Uh, but one of the other most common forms of breath prayer is to pray scripture. And you're going to hear Jack and Henry Lewis now talk about uh, some scriptures or read some scriptures. And these are scriptures that you might use this week as breath prayers. A reading from 1 Peter 5 through 7. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. A reading from 1 Peter 5 through 7. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Psalm chapter 8, verse 4. What are humans that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? What are humans that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Lord, listen to your children pray. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Lord, listen to your children praying. 
Lord, send your Spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. While I was in seminary, it was a cohort of students, and we were together uh, learning the different ways in which Christians have prayed throughout the centuries. And amongst the prayers that we learned was breath prayer. It was one of the most simple forms of prayer, uh, but I have found that it has been one that has also been one that I've used quite often, and I find it quite comforting for me. Many people have used this prayer and have learned it in different ways. Uh, the first time that I learned it was with the same prayer that Jason mentioned earlier. From there, we were encouraged to get creative in the group of words or perhaps a small phrase or, in this case, a scripture uh, that we would use as a home base for the prayer. The one that I want to introduce you to today is inspired by Psalm 119. This one is very simple, and it requires for us to do deep breathing. And so we'll use our diaphragm, those muscles that are beneath our lungs that help us to breathe deeply. And we'll breathe in for four seconds, hold for a second, and then breathe out for four seconds. And as we are breathing in, we will pray inwardly, these words, God, you are my light. And then we'll hold for a second. And then we will exhale saying, guide me in your ways. And we'll pray that inwardly. So as we breathe in for four seconds deeply, God, you are my light. Hold for a second. Guide me in your ways. Can you do that with me for four times? Breathe in. God, you are my light. Guide me in your ways. God, you are my light. Guide me in your ways. God, you are my light. Guide me in your ways. God, you are my light. Guide me in your ways.
A reading from Psalm 94 through 19. When the cares of my heart are many, your comforts cheer my soul. Psalm 94, 19. When the cares of my heart are many, your comforts cheer my soul. First Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. First Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Thank you.